What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing an install on some front sequential DRLs purchased from DrQ50.com. Now currently DrQ50 sells a limited number of items but is slowly expanding his inventory. So if you get a chance, be sure to check out his website and see if there's anything you want to pick up for yourself. So inside the box that I received, I got two front sequential lights and the two load resistors to help eliminate hyperflashing. Now we're going to talk about hyperflashing a little more in detail later on in the video. On the back of the lights here, you'll see the plug for the sequential feature and the additional red wire to connect the daytime running lights, if that's something you choose to do. With all that out of the way, the first thing I need to do is to make sure both lights are functioning correctly. So since I already had the front bumper off, here you can see both lights plugged in and functioning the way they're supposed to. And now that I know they work, it's time to not only install them, but to wrap them in some yellow Laminex film. So that way they match my fog lights. Laminex does make a pre-cut film for our lights. However, I had these laying around from a different vehicle and they'll do the job just fine after a little bit of trimming. Before I can apply the film, I need to clean the lenses with some isopropyl alcohol and let them air dry for about two minutes. Once dry, I'm gonna align these the best fit I can with the lights and use an X-Acto knife to trim the excess film off by guiding the blade across the lens at around a 45 degree angle. Doing so will help avoid nicking the lens or overcutting the film and allowing the color to show through the film. So there are a few ways we can wire these lights in, and the method you choose will depend on a few variables. First, if you already have a Diode Dynamics Always On module, then wiring both lights into the harness like Speedcoaster Studios did would probably be a good way to go, as long as you don't mind running wires from the driver's side to the passenger side of the car. If you do not have the Diode Dynamics kit, it's because you either haven't bought it yet, or you don't like the fog lights always on, which is perfectly fine if that's more your style. That said, there are at least two other ways to wire in the DRLs without that kit being pre-installed. For instance, if you only want them to come on when the fogs are on, then using a tester, you can find which wire is positive of the two wires that make up of the fog light plug, which ultimately end up being the larger of the two wires, which are the blue and the white wires. Tapping into the harness on these two wires will have activation of the DRLs anytime the fog lights are on, excluding, of course, when the high beams are on, because when that happens, the fog lights turn off. Secondly, if you want the DRLs on constantly to include when the headlights are in DRL mode themselves or in both low and high beam functioning, then you can also use a tester to find the source of the power for this action in the headlight plug, which ended up being the green wire on the far right side of the plug as if you were facing the plug from the front of the car. Now, as you can see, I did remove the headlight for ease of access to avoid sitting in the wheel well while trying to film all this for you. Be advised, you don't have to do this. You can actually access everything I'm doing from the wheel well by removing the wheel well guards and turning the wheel inward. So if you don't want to run wires across the front of the car, I recommend tapping the headlight plugs on each side of the car to keep the install clean and each set of wiring localized and separate. Now me personally, I'm going to test a theory and I'm going to tap into the fog light plug so that way they only come on when the fogs are on. But I'm doing this with the intention of buying the always on module later on down the road. And based on how I've seen that harness operate, it should not only keep the fog light on, but it should also keep on anything that is tapped into the fog light plug as well. I guess I won't know until I find out when I buy the harness. And if all else fails and it doesn't work the way I'm thinking it will, I'll just have to rewire my wiring to make sure the DRLs stay on or tap them into the harness like I said previously. 
So what we need to do next is tap the red wire into the plug, but before I do, I'm going to solder in the supplied load resistor to help avoid the hyperflashing that I talked about previously. Hyperflashing occurs when an outside event draws power and can cause the lights to flash very fast due to the voltage increase or voltage drop. An example that could cause this would be if the windows are being put down while the light is actively flashing which is actually a known complaint regarding this front kit. Without the use of this resistor, it's only gonna hyper flash while the action is taking place. Once the action ceases, the flashing will go back to normal. So if that isn't a major concern for you, then you can skip the step and you can install the DRLs directly. Um, since I have them though, I'm gonna go ahead and install them because why not? Okay, so now that these are all soldered up, I'm going to be crimping in a T-tap made by T-Con. Um, I got this set from Amazon, and as you can see, it accommodates three different gauge ranges of wire. There are similar in use to a standard crimp press splicer, however, it adds a nice spade connector that can be unplugged for easier removal of a part as necessary. Now that the wiring is complete, we need to prep the plug for the T-tap. Since the harness wire is thicker than the supplied red wire, what I had to do was use a blue splicer and a red spade but both still go together just fine. So to prep the wire, you can see I separated it from the loom and then notched the loom to allow the T-tap to countersink into the loom just enough so that way when I tape this back up, the tape will wrap around the splicer slightly and keep it more secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this, line this up with the hole, which is right there. Grab this side, press it down on top of itself hold it in place, get some pliers, and give it a squeeze. And it's that simple. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this up, and then we'll do a test on the passenger and driver's side lights to make sure they're both functional. Headlights are on, so we'll go ahead and zoom in real quick so you can see what I did here. Um, I did take a little bit extra wire here and shoved it back in the loom and kind of looped it around itself so that way I just have a little extra wire coming out and it plugs in right there fault light plugs in here indicator plugs in here everything just is in nice and neat orderly fashion so now I'm going to go ahead and unplug these both sides look identical I'm going to seal these up just a little bit better tape them down some clean this up and then we'll mount them on the bumper and get the bumper put back on
Well, that's going to do it for this one. I hope everybody that watched it found it helpful. And if you are new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see all of you on the next one.